Hello, everyone. My name is Lori Robel from Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Thank you for joining our talk today. Our webinar today is focused on HPE OpenStack for HPUX 2.0. And I want to make sure that uh, you're comfortable with the environment we're using today on 24, so let me show you a few things about the space you're in. First, on the left-hand side, you'll, you'll have the ability to submit questions or comments throughout the session, and we have folks to answer them. You also have a copy of today's material. It is in PDF form. It's available for you to download and use as your own reference. And a reminder that we are recording today's session, so you can come back and listen to it or um, suggest it to your colleagues to register and replay the event. Lastly, if you need to see anything bigger, you can maximize any of the separate areas in your browser so you can see better. Uh, so as I mentioned, I'm Lori Robel, and I'm a product manager in the HPUX Mission Critical Team. And today we have Anir Bande, who's the product manager for OpenStack as well. We're excited to share the news about OpenStack 2.0 today, but I do want to set some expectations. This product is currently available as a restricted, limited release product. The current support flow is not through the standard HPE channels, but through an open stack for HPUX engineering distribution list, which you see there, including for initial setup and tests. That said, we're working closely with HPE support and SUSE to set up a more standard support path. Okay, let's look briefly at the agenda for our webinar. Uh, first, Anir Bon will explain why OpenStack is interesting or why should we care. Then he'll give an intro and overview of OpenStack. He'll talk specifically about OpenStack for HPUX and its benefits. Then he'll walk through a demo given in screenshots, and we'll walk through a couple customer use cases. We'll also show some resources to reference and, if time, answer a few live questions. But again, we'll be answering the web questions uh, within the web interface itself. Now, Nirvana, I'd like to hand it to you to walk through OpenStack for HPUX. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Nirvana. So, hi. As Lori introduced, I am Nirvana Day, uh, Product Manager with HPUX. <coughs> Today, uh, we start by talking about how outside forces are disrupting business and government. As we turn into this new idea economy, ideas are turning faster into products and services, and this has been, never been easier. And cloud is re redefining how applications and businesses are delivered and written. In this scenario, traditional deployments like workloads on HP Unix we need to see how they could adapt to this changing environment and how we could leverage the advancements in open source technology to make sure that we help our customers churn out their ideas into applications faster and easier. The growth of OpenStack. <clears throat> the growth of OpenStack-based uh, managing uh, solutions in managing complex and heterogeneous mission critical solutions has been there for quite some time. Forrester, uh, Forrester reports that new OpenStack deployments will grow around by 44 percent year on year and reach to around 2.2 billion dollars by the year 2020. OpenStack users will also power over half of the Fortune 100 data centers around the globe, 
and total number of open stack deployments is expected to grow tenfold by 2020. <clears throat> the capability of provisioning both virtual and bare metal servers support all integrity hardwares and rack mounts is supported in this OpenStack release. Just give me one second. What are the benefits of using HP Unix, OpenStack on HP Unix? We have been quite familiar with different IAS platforms that we had offered over the years. We had SIM, System Insight Management, which, which was HP proprietary, and it was a really a true IAS platform. Unfortunately, we do not have one view or replacement product coming onto HP Unix. To answer that, we have OpenStack for HP Unix, a solution that would help you to manage your heterogeneous workloads. Here, you not only can create a truly an IS platform for business agility, you also have a freedom to choose an OpenStack release of your choice, and also use an industry standard benchmark for cloud orchestration and lifecycle management. <clears throat> HP Unix had already had strengths in its virtualization capabilities. If you have seen over the decades how the virtualization capabilities of HP Unix has matured, be it using N parts or virtual partitions of V parts or integrated virtual machines or containers. These are the varied range of virtualization options available to HP Unix users. And combined with Service Guard, you have a fully integrated solution with Service Guard, instant capacity, and various system management tools. The point here that we want to make that HP Unix was always ready for the cloud. It was just how we would move into it. And now OpenStack for HP Unix has given us a platform to move in a, to, uh, to a private cloud paradigm in a true open source manner. So here, we talk about HP Unix and OpenStack strategy, a hybrid cloud solution. From the business need, we need an end-to-end -end system management solution for our install base. And mind you, HP Unix is the longest supported or publicly, publicly supported Unix among the top three Unix vendors. We have support at least till 2025 and beyond. Customers needed was a support for heterogeneous data center infrastructure with a common infrastructure management solution and leverage industry-wide practices around open source. Large Unix accounts were requesting for commonality of features with Linux and HP Unix. And within our own company, we have huge data centers deployed with on experience on, th on thousands of servers. Now, a problem that is often faced by our customer is the aging Unix admin workforce. It's true that no longer Unix is taught in schools anymore, and hence it becomes prohibitively costlier for customers to get HP Unix admins. As the workforce age, Companies are thinking of alternate solutions, and HP works with them to figure out how they could help them figure 
create or you know create a, a fill the demand of an of an aging Unix admin workforce. Using this solution, you could leverage a customer could leverage the same Linux admin using the same paradigms that they are accustomed to, and use a truly UI-based solution to manage your X86 servers as well as your Unix installation using a single pane of glass. So the outcome was here, was a the outcome that we came up with was the product that we are talking about. This helps us not only elongate HBDX support life, but makes the, our life of our customers much easier. So we will go through a small introduction to OpenStack and its components, something you probably may always be familiar with. So what is OpenStack and how is it called a cloud operating system? As you see here, OpenStack is a massively scalable infrastructure as a service open source, multi-tenant, modular, and a plug-in um, architecture. All the infrastructure vendors, namely that you see below, uh, uh, like Dell, EMC, Cisco, Hello Packard, Enterprises, support OpenStack as a way to abstract their hardware. The architecture is modular enough, and that is the reason that we have been able to create a, a plugin for HP Unix to be able to support integrated servers along with it, normal x86 hardware. Here, we look at major OpenStack components and we look at how we have been able to connect with using those components. The first is a compute module called Nova. The integrated VM plugin actually works with the Nova compute module, module to be able to deploy and provision your virtual machines. We have made changes or added, extended the Neutron module, which is the networking side of things, to be for us to be able to add VLAN capabilities with both port-based VLAN as well as vSwitch, uh, VLAN-backed vSwitches. We use Glance module as a proxy for our OE images. We use Cinder to abstract the storage, and we expose both LVM and 3PAR block storages through it. We also have uh, we also have uh, made changes to Ironic to help us with bare metal deployment and uh, with Silometer to be able to help us with metering, which we will see in the following slides. So this is a generic OpenStack use case. And the point that you would, would like to focus on is would be a compute starter kit, which is a private cloud infrastructure provider. OpenStack has a huge number of use case configurations, ranging from big data to public cloud, and it is well accepted throughout the industry. There are many ways in which OpenStack in general can be deployed. There are manual ways through Ubuntu Server, RHEL, CentOS, OpenSUSE, and SLES. We also have commercial offerings from Red Hat Rackspace and IBM, and not to mention HP Helion, our own grown OpenStack distribution, 
the primary vehicle through which we distribute OpenStack for HP Unix. For local development environment, DevStack plays an important role, and that's on which we do our, all our development with. Our current HP Helion 8 is, a, is based on SUSE uh, as, a, as an OS for the controller nodes. Now we will deep dive into OpenStack for HP Unix and, how, and its benefits. So as I mentioned here, and as you can see in the animation, you have your traditional infrastructure, Unix infrastructure on your right bottom, and you have your normal modern XSC server infrastructure on your left hand side. Using a set of controller nodes that you can see, using a set of controller nodes that you can see, how this is how HP Helion is able to deploy uh, as a lifecycle manager as, and as a controller node. Helion already supports XSC server infrastructure, and with this new enablement solution, we are also being able to bring in our integrity hardware in this PV as well. On the right hand side, you will see a benefit, something we already have glanced over. But the most important thing is how we are able to seamlessly combine these two disparate worlds of X86 and integrity into a single infrastructure solution, something that is future ready and something that could be applied across a common set of admins. Here, we see a block diagram of the actual architecture, and you see how supply, demand, and delivery meet with different layers of OpenStack. Focusing on the topmost solution, there is a common UI layer for things like access management, subscription management, SLA compliances, and usage reporting. This can be consumed either through the inbuilt Horizon dashboard, which is proprietary to OpenStack, as well as CSA and operation orchestration to consumer portals. And not to mention, these are all REST API-based interfaces, so customers are free to write their or integrate with their own UI layer and have the same set of services as exposed to Horizon. In the delivery layer, the middle layer, what you see is the backend solution layer, the request for processing and activation, things like multi-tenancy and service management, resource monitoring and so resource and service monitoring are delivered using the core Helion 8.0 solution. The REST APIs that you see in blue and the VM VPAR drivers and the bare metal drivers are the ones that you see are the ones that HPE has added around the core solution. This was something that I glossed over in a couple of slides earlier when I was showing the HP Unix, the OpenStack components. If you focus on your middle right, you see the Ignite UX server. This means that you still need to have an Ignite UX server in your setup or in the same subnet to be able to provision those images. Coming down, the actual resources, which is the, the VSP, on which the guest VMs are created, or the VPAR and the VM guests are created, or in case of physical infrastructure, the US instances on rack mounts, blades, and superdomes are provisioned. That is the, that is the, that is the deployable resource layer. So the, all the three layers act in unison. All the three layers talk over 
REST API based services so that it creates a truly modular architecture and because we have tried to keep things same, it gives the customer a look and feel or it comes at the same experience that they would have been when they would have used a CLI or a cloud system based interface. Although UI is different, but the paradigms are the same. Now we look at the Opel stack for UX packaging model. This is how uh, the consumer or the customer will consume these packages and deploy in their own environment. On the left hand side, you will see standard HPE Helion product bundle that can be bought from HPE. And on the right hand side, the additional SKUs will help you to, to create uh, or I would say the, uh, the packaging, uh, you know, the, sorry, let me rewind and, and tell you, on the right hand side, you see how the whole packages are created. You will, you have, uh, you have Ironic Nova plugins extensions bundled using Ansible scripts, and you have installers, customers run the installers, and for deployment, they use the configuration scripts to configure to their hardware, to their storage and network, and this all happens with the help of HPE if the customer desires so. And the whole this is how the whole deployment works. You will have unit test scripts bundled into it. You have QX based package testing inside this. These are all standard to a to Opal stack and we have maintained that process. So here, we talk about the product deployment steps. As I have already talked with you, the Helion 8.0 on X86 cloud controllers are a prerequisite. Please mind, keep in mind that the controller plane is still on X86 hardware. The controller plane does not run on HP Unix. It is the compute modules that are managed by the controller plane which are of integrity hardware. Helion installation with standard install procedures and leveraging Existing setup is available. If a customer has already an existing Helion 8.0 setup, they could take that and they could deploy OpenStack for HP Unix using the scripts detailed in the package. There are documentations, user guides that have been hosted on software depot, which would help customers to go through the processes, and if required help, HP, is, HP engineering is, will be with them to provide the necessary expertise. Here, we talk about all the features that has gone into this 2.0 release. From the provisioning perspective, we have, we can provision VMs, VPARs, and bare metals. For storage configuration, you could configure volume groups and 3PAR through cinder block storages, which could be eventually attached to this compute modules. We also support non hp hard uh, storage hardware as well those hardware which are supported by hp unix like itachi ibm and xp for networking we support both flat 
and different kinds of VLAN networking, mainly port-based and vSwitch back, VLAN backed vSwitches. For authentication, we have enabled keys-based authentication mechanism. We support resizing of VMs and VPARs in terms of CPU and memory, subject to the limitation that already HP uh, VMs has. For onboarding, we could onboard existing VMs and VPARs that has been created out of band, and I will touch on this topic more down the slides. And for, finally, for monitoring, you can use Silometer agents and use Helion Operation Console to monitor CPU and memory utilization for each of your deployed instances. So this picture gives you a very nice overview of all the capabilities. And we believe that we kind of have covered around 80% of the most used cases with the 2.0 release. Here, we draw a summary that we have talked about in the previous slides for the current release. And as I promised, I would be more, I will be delving more into the, in the first point, which is import existing virtual machines into the Office Tech environment. As we started developing and you know, uh, trying it out with customers, we realized that customer environments have already deployed hundreds of VPAR and VM instances. So we had to figure out a way how we, and those were created out of band either through CLI or through other interfaces like system inside management. So we, we gave a way, a way for which those existing VMs could be brought into the orchestration or uh, manifold of OpenStack, and that's where we, may, we mean by importing existing VMs into the OpenStack management. Cinder block storage has been enabled as it gives a abstraction over regular storage hardware. It guarantees high performance, high availability, and our and unsurplus, unsurplus, uh, surplus scale for our HP Unix cloud infrastructure. We also have brought in support for other third-party storage vendors like IBM, Dell, EMC, and Hitachi. And those in those storage uh, storage hardware that were that were already supported in HP Unix support matrix. We now have telemetry support because customers have said that they want their management to be able to monitor and measure how much the resource utilization for each of the VMs or instances that we are getting deployed. So we have added telemetry support. And we have also expanded virtual machine management options by moving into, multi, uh, moving into both kind of VLAN support, support for multiple IPs, during provisioning for redundancy, and also support for multi-path block storages and allocation through volume groups. These all are targeted towards high availability and feature completeness. Here, we will glance through the major release features that have gone in with the HOS 4.0 release as well as HOS 8.0 release. By the way, HOS expands into Helion OpenStack. The version that we were, were earlier available with HOS was based on AQLX for the controller nodes and on Metaka release of OpenStack, we have upgraded into Pike as well as Plus 12 service pack 3. And as you see here, the earlier release were, feature, were focused on most basic use cases like onboarding, provisioning, uh, network, and storage. And now with the current 2.0 release, we support, we have, we have expanded support 
to other high value features like multi multi vendor storage support resizing provisioning for srp 9000 containers and multipathing for higher redundancy the two list give you an, an estimate how much features and how much work has gone into the both the releases and this gives a good indication of the amount of investment that Hewlett Packard Enterprise is putting in on HP Unix. We, we understand that we have to keep our operating environment modern to suit the customer needs and to, be, to help them move into uh, idea economy faster. We will go through a small product demonstration where we will walk through the screenshots of major features that has gone in in the 2.0 release. Here, you would see a typical Helion autostat configuration. You see the three controller nodes there. The three are there for high availability, and that is what is recommended by Helion, where you have the compute, the you know the, the compute management, the Nova neutrons, and the, and the other agents sitting. As I said earlier, they run on XSS controller nodes, and that is your basic Helion open stack distribution sitting there. And the topping layer would be the plugins that we deliver through our packages. Along with it, we need a proxy compute node where the Canova compute and neutron networking agents reside, and they proxy to the actual HP Unix instances. You have, you see, a three-part storage, but that could be replaced by any other sub HP Unix supported storage. You see the Ignite UX server that you have been very familiar with in your environment. And then you have your hosts, which have in them deployed VMs, VPARs, or bare metal instances. The yellow lines show the fiber channel network, whereas, whereas the, the blue lines show the uh, the, the deployment network, uh, the, or you know, the network on which OpenStack talks over the agents, or you can say the management plane. The blue is the management plane, whereas, whereas yellow is your storage plane. So in all, you see four. You you need the bare minimal four bare metal x six hardware. And your set of Ignite, uh, your, your set of Ignite UX and your integrity hardware for a complete installation. The first screenshot that you see here is how do you register an integrity VM? How OpenStack can be used? to manage the view and see the total view of the hypervisors. <clears throat> if you focus on the pie charts, they show you your total vCPU usages of all the Unix nodes or, or Itanium hardware that's deployed, your total memory usage characterizations, as well as your storage characterizations. As you see here down in the table, you see the hypervisor type is HPVM. That's a new hypervisor type that has been added, and it shows you the host. Each of the hosts that are there would show itself or manifest as an as an row entry into here. So you see the total number of vCPUs, the vCPUs consumed, RAM, RAM, you know, total, total amount of memory consumed, as well as storages. 
You also see how many instances that have been deployed onto this. This can be accessed through the admin console. So this is a overall a summary view of your total deployment infrastructure. Now, we will talk about something called flavor. People familiar with OpenStack would already be knowing this terminology, but for others, this is something akin to a template. So, op so OpenStack mandates a flavor has to be created for each kind of instance to be deployed. And in our case, we can create different flavors or templates based on what kind of guests that you want to deploy. So for example, you want to have a, a type of a guest with like, you know, four CPUs, uh, 20 GB RAM and like a particular root disk, you would create a template for that and use the template or use the flavor to deploy future instances. So on your right hand side, you could see a set of templates or a set of flavors that has already been created. And you see the number of vCPUs that has been given to each template. The features kind of cropped. Else you could also see total number amount of RAM deployed total amount of root, the root disk that is fixed with the flavor. So you, so you can you, you, you achieve this using admin and create flavor UI. Moving on. This, this screenshot shows you how you can register an HP Unix image in a glance repository uh, which acts as a proxy for your Ignite UX servers. Please remember, as I told earlier, that you still need to retain an Ignite UX server in your network. So here, what we do is, since OpenStack uses a glance as a repository services, we create a glance proxy or we create an entry proxy for each kind of image that is that would be there on your Ignite server and we map it to the name. We, we give, you have to create an entry here and you have to show you know, you put what, you, what, you, what your root path is as well as the name of that image would have to exactly match a name that you would have at your glance, at, at your Ignite US repository. In that way, internally, it will map and help you to use, uh, to, uh, to release an image into glance to be used for future deployments. Okay, we'll move. This also can be accessed to the admin tab. Now we talk, we see here how we would do the network support. And as mentioned earlier, we have not only a flat, we have support for flat networking, as we have support for port-based VLAN network, as well as VLAN-backed vSwitch network. So here, a guest can have both the type of network at the same time. And you can see here two different kinds of networks that have been deployed. And you see in the highlight, one of them is a flat VLAN networking, whereas other, sorry, one of them is a flat network and other is a VLAN network with, an, with a tag as 30. So, we could say we kind of feature complete from, at least from, from, not only at least, from the networking side, we are really, you know, we are feature complete and you, you can have all the features that you could expect from a CLI based interface. Moving on. This is where we show you how to provision an actual VM from the project client, from the project tab. You have to go to a launch instance and it will give you an option to choose a flavor 
something that you had created in the earlier slides. You have created, remember, we had created a flavor, for example, a, fl a flavor with like, so like 10 GB RAM and uh, a particular root disk, as well as a, a set of vCPUs. You choose the source image and the network that we also had created earlier, and you go into and say, launch instance. The, this is, you know, this is the same flow. And when I was talking about leveraging both Linux and HP Unix admins in a single pane of glass, reducing personal cost, is this, a, this is the same process that an admin would use to launch any other x86-based virtual machines, be it on top of ESXi or KVM or Zen. So this gives you a seamless way, and you don't know, and for newer infrastructure admins, you don't have to mo memorize complicated command line interfaces or command, command line options to be able to create and deploy VMs. This is less error prone as well, and it is reputable and scalable. Now we show you how we can attach a, a three-par volume, and three-par is a misnomer here. We could basically call it any supported uh, storage volume to be attached here, be it Dell EMC, Hitachi, IBM, XP, EVA, anything that HP Unix already supports. So we go to clear, which you can, you go to the clear, navigate to the volume section at Horizon, and you create a volume, give its name, give its characterizations in terms of sizes, and you can finally attach that volume to an HP Unix instance. You can create multiple volumes and attach them and use them. And these are based and these are Cinder volumes that you can use for both of you for your boot as well as your application storage needs. Here you can create a volume and attach it to the VM, or, or in the other way you could create a volume and go back and create a create a VM and attach it later. So all kind of workflows are possible. I'm moving into a LVM-based storage provisioning. Again, we have to use here a CLI to create a volume group and enroll them at Cinder. So that's the outer band CLI work for us. And then from the Horizon dashboard, we go to project and volumes and create a new volume group. And the rest of the flow is all the same. So now you have the LVM attached to your instances, or you create an LVM and you attach and you go and create instances and attach them later. So this again, this is how exactly how we would provision or a storage admin would provision any other, uh, you know, uh, or provision storage for any other kind of kind of uh, virtual machines as well. So we talk about now about the onboarding part in details something that I already have talked in two of the slides earlier, and this is really important. We faced with an issue where a customer has hundreds of existing VMs and they need it to be, you know, when we deployed OpenStack, they need it to be brought into the management review, which earlier could not be done. So the team has innovatively had found solutions. The way where using the flavors as well as uh, something called a metadata called load deploy. So you create a flavor as you would have done in any of the template cases, creating a new flavor case. And then you create a flavor and uh, attach a metadata called load deploy as true. That tells the controller that this would be used, this flavor would be used to import. So when you, now when we go and import, for existing VMs, we need to give its IP address, and it has to have the same signature in terms of CPU and RAM, so that it could directly go and import. And this process is repeatable, this say, and, and it is a one-time affair. Once you have imported all your virtual machines into and the, into the preview of the fact, you can continue managing them as if they were created natively from this interface. And last, but not the least, 
This is a very interesting feature that has been added from the kilometer. This helps management to look at individual virtual machines and their consumption for telemetry purposes, how the consumption for both memory and CPU varies over time, and this chart is available for each individual VM. This is not available through the Horizon dashboard, but Helion provides an option called Operation Confirm, which could be launched from home and my dashboard, create new chart. This would show you for each of your deployed instances how the consumption would vary over time, something that the executive or the management could look at and see how the overall utilization of the infrastructure is happening. Now we move into a use case, customer use case scenario. So the first customer use case was, was a large financial services industry customer in Asia Pacific. So the use case where to provision business logic for different countries with country specific regulatory needs. So they wanted to have deployments or US deployments with applications, you know, uh, that targeted towards or customized towards the particular country. There was needed for frequent change and update for, for the regulation for those environments as there were regulations were still maturing. And they wanted a hassle free and disruption proof migration. So when we deployed with them into a, you know in a test environment, the time to test and test and deploy decreased manifold as you could see here. Manpower needs came down, and moreover, most importantly, number of mistaken implementations drastically reduced as well. This is because this is because the whole thing is templated or flavored, and you could just you know repeat the process once it is done. So you see the you see the use case here where you have uh, an MSA storage along with Superdome and you have computers and servers, a normal setup that you use, and they used a banking portal. Mind you, they did not use the normal Horizon dashboard, and that is the power of what OpenStack gives you. They, had, they could integrate with their existing portal because Helion or any OpenStack exposes the services to RESTful APIs. So move to the customer use case number two where a defense organization had to build an internal private cloud based on HP Unix. They had to provision their hardware for test purposes, manage a large pool of integrity hardware and integrity and exclusive hardware. I mean, that's the holy grail for, this, for our solution to be, to be able to manage heterogeneous data centers. And they wanted a hassle-free and disruption migration solution. So again, you see here, with the experimentation with this customer, the time to test, deploy, and manpower needs came down by, you know, by, uh, I would say probably by an order, if not, if I'm not exaggerating, and number of mistakes came down as well. So again, you see here how complex the deployment was. You see the, how complex the deployment was with the customer, with separate, the spread over separate, uh, separate Superdome infrastructure, both in the production as well as internal network. There's a typo here. The internet it would be probably called an internal network, and all managed through an internal portal. Now, now probably last slide for us, for me, to glance over. A set of features, the roadmap slide. So I would not go through each of these line items here, but the sheer volume shows you how much work HP is, or how much work that an engineering is working on this, and HP is investing here. So from you see the from here you see the one dot from one dot release where we did enable basic features to the September release at two where we had more advanced features. And in the future, we're looking for elimination 
for Ignite UX Server. Uh, that's something that, that we mandate today. We look at auto onboarding, VM, VPAR online migration, moving to new cloud, moving to a newer version of Helium OpenStack, uh, which is called uh, actually it's called Rocky. Uh, Queens is like you know, we have bypassed Queens and moved to Rocky. Better support for Silometer, and going forward we would have we would have support for classic VPARs for our legacy customers, support for IPv6, and support for containerized planes as well. Here we I'll stop, and I will uh, hand it over to Laurie. Uh, Laurie uh, uh, I will speak over here. The recommendations here is that during your time to move into a truly hybrid infrastructure, leverage the use, leverage the new technologies, and reduce the risk with your admins. And uh, I would uh, thank you for your patient listening. And Laurie, please, can you? Help us with the rest of the slides. Um, yes, Anirban, thank you so much. So we have um, a few references for um, open source, I mean OpenStack, sorry, uh, the product page, product documentation, and blogs. And then we also wanted to point out the HPUX resources, so documentation resources on the left and the top center um, are marketing website. Um, we also have a quarterly newsletter, so you can subscribe to that or check out archives. And remember that there's the user group, uh, the Connect user group, and that's for free, so you can uh, become a member and get a lot of information and advocacy. And also at HPE Discover, we do have even sessions on integrity and HPUX. And also this and other webinars are on our YouTube HPUX channel. So, you know, please engage with us at HPE. Um, discuss how a partnership with OpenStack for HPUX can position your business to win. You can see uh, the HPE Helion website there as well as um, an email for the HPUX OpenStack team. And yes, we continue to invest in HPUX. We're excited to have the OpenStack offering, uh, one of our newer industry standard technologies that allows us to be managed as well as with x86 infrastructure. And um, we do focus, of course, on HPUX uh, with availability, scalability, security, manageability, um, reducing your risk, and trying to help help you meet your business requirements so you can be successful. Um, Anir Bon, I have a few questions uh, here. We have some questions in the room, but let me give you a couple that might be useful um, to the audience. So one question here, can we provision Integrity bare metal servers and Integrity virtual machines using the same Helion instance? Are you unmuted? Yeah. So, so we need to use today two different Helion instances to manage virtual as well as bare metal infrastructure. Yes, Laurie? Okay, sounds good. Thank you for that answer. And here, um, let me give you another one. Can we get the usage statistics of all the VMs that are currently running as a single report? Can we get the user search as a single report? Yeah. Yeah, format. yeah we can get uh, all the reports in a CSV format and in a table format also using Silometer. Okay, great. CPU, Thank CPU you very statistics, much. Yeah, single. CPU statistics, memory statistics, and network users. We can get. Yeah, so okay, great. we can. Okay, great. So um, in closing, um, is there anything more that you'd like to say before uh, we close off the webinar, uh, Nirbhan? No, thank you for uh, you know, registering for the webinar. It was great. It was a pleasure to be able to present a new exciting technology in the HP Unix. 
And as we continue to invest, we continue to bring in newer advancements and keep you engaged and excited. Thank you all. Thank you, Anirban, for presenting. And again, please do use the resources that we mentioned at the end, not only for OpenStack, but for you know, uh, the other webinars, other resources, references for our recent update release um, so that you can stay informed of what's going on as well as um, refer to our newsletter, our quarterly newsletter. Thank you again for your time today.